Hello again. For those of you that know me, you'll also know that the vast majority of my videos cover astronomy, either product reviews or tutorials, etc. This one's very slightly different, and it's actually about action cams. But don't go away yet, don't lose interest, because I am going to cover astronomy in it as well. Uh, now, with the action camera market, there is one company that absolutely dominates, and that's GoPro. Now, the thing is that when a company dominates the market like that, it also tends to hike the price up because there's not a lot of competition out there. If somebody does choose to compete, though, it can actually be of a great benefit to us because they have to compete on several levels, and that's the technology, the feature set, the build quality, and most importantly, the price. And with that, I think I've found a winner. And the winner for me is called the ISO Edge. Now what we're going to do is we're going to have a quick look in the box first of all. And we'll show you what's in there. I'm going to do that very, very quickly because you can just look online and there's God knows how many videos about doing out of the box reviews. Um, so I'm, I would, I'd rather cover the more important stuff like what, it, what I can do with it. Show you examples of what I've done with it and, and show you the feature set. So that's what we're going to do. Right, a very quick, what have you got in the box? Well, first of all, obviously, we've got the camera with its LCD screen on the back. And there's one, two, three buttons, two on the front, one on the top. Uh, the memory card slots and the various sockets are there on the side. Uh, you get what, what I'm going to call a general purpose cage, which is this. Now, this has a fitting on the bottom, which is really known as the, the GoPro fitting, I suppose. And basically the camera will fit inside that in whatever orientation that you want. And this then is used to fit to your various um, add-ons. Now this all comes in the box. You get a handle so that you can use it like a, a, a camcorder. And you get a waterproof case. This is actually waterproof to 40 metres so you can take it in a swimming pool and go scuba diving with it and you get a USB lead you get a nice little drawstring bag to keep all your bits and pieces in you get a tripod mount which again the fittings will just the cage and the waterproof box will fit onto you get a couple of these uh, one's curved one's not they're actually for sticking onto um, your, your surfboard or your snowboard or you know your extreme ironing board um, you know whatever now you get also a couple of bits like this that are almost like a, a universal joint that allows you then to move the camera in various orientations yeah uh, like i said these all come with it uh the suction cup which is absolutely brilliant this suction cup will hold a 15 pound bowling ball i kid you not and it will also stick on curved surfaces so you can put it onto a motorcycle crash helmet and look silly going down the road with a camera on your head um it's it's just it's probably the best suction cup that i've, I've ever seen I mean, those of us that have got a uh, satellite navigation stuff that you stick on your windscreen and everything this is not like those trust me uh, it's, you'll see if you get one that's all i'm going to say um but like i said that is absolutely brilliant as well um there's a quick release belt belt buckle clip that you can connect the camera to so you can fit it onto a belt or a harness or whatever um another one of those those surfboard parts the only thing really that you don't get in it you even get a, a little wrist thing the only thing that you don't get in it that is a little bit of a disappointment really um is you don't get a memory card you do need a micro sd memory card now I have to say, with a lot of these products now that need memory cards, I think the companies are, are missing out on something. They should put a small capacity memory card in there. It's a bit, it takes you back to your childhood. You know when you got a robot for your birthday or for Christmas and when you open the box there's no batteries in it? It's the same, isn't it? It doesn't matter how old we are because boys always stay children and we just like our toys and it, it just, you know, I think it would just make a nice little, um, little addition there. Now, let's have a look at the camera itself. As you can see, it's got an LCD view screen on it. You just hold the button in to turn it on, and you get a little bleep, and you can see there's the view screen. The feature set of it is just absolutely unbelievable, and I'm going to cover that shortly. 
Um, the the picture quality is great. Uh, you, all the setup is done with the two buttons on the front. There's a you can switch modes. It's a still camera. It's a video camera. You can time lapse with it. Um, you can view your pictures using the the viewfinder on the back. Uh, there's just all sorts of stuff you can do with it, and the build quality is actually very very nice. It does have a removable battery. And it's a, it's just a, a, I don't know, it's a custom battery, I suppose. It's, it's their own make, but you can buy extra batteries for it as well. Now, also, you can use it as a webcam. Um, the features, if you go into the the setup, you can change the USB mode so that it becomes either uh, it acts like a memory card when you're putting your photographs off it or on it or you know swapping files about. But also you can switch mode and it will charge up or be taking power while you're using it, which can be quite handy. Um, and as well as that, you can use it as a webcam, believe it or not. Now I've been using it to do a few bits of. Um, stop frame imaging um, you know time lapse I've stuck it on the inside of my car I've just done all sorts with it just to play with it and, and, and basically see what it can do so next I'm just going to show you a couple of the things that I've done with it and you can judge for yourself what the quality is like and I will say that when I bring these up I will give you a brief description because there's practically no editing been done with them they've not been colour enhanced they've not been photoshopped or anything um, but let's just have a look Okay, this was the first day that I got the camera and it's basically been arrived that day, taken straight out of the box. Uh, I've looked at the settings, put it into video mode, added the suction cup, stuck it on my car windscreen and gone to Tesco's. Now I will point out that if you look, you may see in light areas that there are some vertical lines in this picture. That's not the camera. Um, what it is, my car has uh, eating elements in the front windscreen for demisting and de-icing etc and for some weird reason the cam the camera just really shows them up well um, but as you can see coming out of the dark and into something brighter it handles that well the colours it's handling well it's lovely and sharp um, you know I'm, it's handling motion very well as everything's moving about there's no blurring I'm just really really happy with it and as I said there's been no editing with this whatsoever it's basically I've taken the file straight out of the camera straight onto the computer and showing it to you that is just as is straight out of the box video so let's have a look at something else Right, this is a time lapse taken uh, from the bedroom window of my house and I used the sucker again and stuck the camera on the outside of the bedroom window and just left it time lapsing. Uh, time lapsing is something you do need to have a little practice at for setting your times up for you know how often it takes the images and everything. Um, you know, after a couple of tries you sort of get the hang of it. Um, again there's been no editing done with that apart from in software I did remove lens effects. Um, it, you just get some curvature with these types of cameras because it's quite a wide angle lens and you can remove it in most editing software there's just a, a lens correction thing that's the only thing that's been done with it again the colours haven't been interfered with uh, no contrast, no sharpness, anything that's basically again straight out of the camera lens corrected and recorded and it, it, I'm quite happy with it, it looks well um, you can obviously, the shadowing that you're seeing and the flickering is the shadow of the clouds as they, as they pass by but again it's something that I'm quite happy with and let's have a look at the same thing done at night time and here it is, that's just exactly the same view really but done at night time um, and as you can see it's still nice and sharp it's picking nighttime colors up nicely and lights and security lights and everything else again I'm quite happy with it but the, the, the ISO edge has actually got a little secret up its sleeve yet that I'm going to show you next finally this is what's called dark lapse mode and it's a mode to be used in in very dark places that should pick up star trails and and various other things that are going on at night it gives you multiple isos and exposure times to play with and i do need a little bit more practice at this this is definitely not uh, my best effort and like it's just, just something that you need to learn a little bit but the potential is definitely there and again i'm happy 
I think most people today have got either a mobile phone or a tablet or both. And one clever thing with the ISO Edge is that you can Wi-Fi it into your phone or into your tablet. And that will give you this so that you can use your tablet or your phone as a viewfinder. And you can control it. So if you want to take a photograph, if you want to place the camera somewhere that you know is, is awkward, then you can just Wi-Fi into it using, like I say, your phone or your tablet. So you can take a photograph like that and you can go into your settings so if we go over here you can switch modes to video and to still and to even look at the stuff that's on your memory card the pictures you've taken on your tablet if you go into the settings now i know for a fact that this won't show up very well on camera but there's a full range of settings there that you can go through and some of them are, are, are customizable which we'll we'll cover a, a little bit later on but so if you want to switch modes to time lapse uh, and and you, tune in you can tune your sort of your settings the sharpness exposure iso you can all do manually and, and again through your phone or through your, your tablet so that's pretty cool um something else that it does is there's a piece of software that you can download from iso and you run this piece of software on your computer and it's it's like a tuning software you can actually make your own presets if you've sort of been playing about with the camera and you've got a specific circumstance where you use it it might be let's for example say you've got a fish tank and you want to you want to take images of your fish tank and the average settings are just not doing it for you you know they may be a little too light a little too dark or whatever what you can do is go into the the software and you can make um sort of a mode you can set the the exposure uh, and the iso the white balance and everything and it and and save it as a preset what you do then is you load that preset onto your memory card and it will actually come up in the menus of your camera so you can call it like my fish tank and if you you know if you if you want to do your, your fish tank again you just go to your modes go fish tank you know that all your settings are right and uh, do you know i'm just i'm blown away by that it's just so cool um, I am really happy with it, but well, apart from a couple of things, and we're going to call those the niggles, the things that I'm not quite happy with. They wouldn't put me off buying the camera uh, because I am absolutely delighted with it, but I do have these niggles and I do hope there's something that does get addressed. So let's look at the niggles. Right, niggles and annoyances. Number one, the memory card slot. Now, the memory card slot is just here. Um, you know, you, you've got a micro SD card there that slots in, but I would like to see the memory card recessed a little bit, and I'll tell you for why. I don't know if you can see or not, but that memory card, you see how it's just sticking out just that tiny little bit. I'd like to see it, it actually recessed a little more than that. The thing is, it would still give you plenty to get hold of to remove it, because if you do the, the normal memory card removal, which is the, you know, the, the press down, there's plenty there to actually get hold of. I'd like to see, once it is in place, for it to be sunk in and be slightly less than flush, just sunk into the casing a little bit. And there's very good reason for that. The first one is, if you're quite heavy handed and you use the, uh, the USB lead that comes with the camera for charging it up and transferring your files and everything, uh, if you're quite heavy handed at, uh, at putting it in, It unplugs your memory card. Let's just push that back in again. Do it again. Oh, didn't do it that time. There we go. You see that? Now, no bad thing really, I suppose. And, and like I said, it is a niggle. But there is another reason why I'd like to see it recessed. And that is when you're placing the camera into this cage. Because when you are placing the camera into the cage, it actually catches the memory card because it's quite a snug fit this I mean obviously it's, it's holding up uh, an expensive piece of equipment so it's quite a snug fit now like I said it will catch on that can you see that it is difficult for me to show it but you can see that it's it's going to press against it it puts pressure on it. and I can see if people aren't aware of that that it's actually going to become an issue where the, the, the socket for the memory um, 
cards in these is going to start to become loose and they're, and they're, and they're going to end up, I think, over time maybe getting returns if people aren't aware of it. Now, the odd thing is that I, I notice it more when I'm trying to remove the camera and it actually sticks in the slot that is cut out of the of the cage. Can you see that? It's actually sticking now, and it's you can see the bow where it's actually pushing the cage outwards. So what I've got to do is just stick a fingernail under there and just ease it out of that cage. That's the first thing. The second thing is that I would like to see a lens cap provided for these. Uh, just a plastic lens cap uh, to go over the, the, the front lens. The reason is that... The USB lead that comes with it for charging it up and, and transferring files is actually a decent quality lead and it's quite stiff. But what I do find is 9 times out of 10, if I connect up to the camera, and this lead will actually flip the camera. I don't know if you can see that, but the, it will flip the camera over. 9 times out of 10, it flips it on my desk right onto the lens and it goes lens side down onto my desk. So I'd just like to see a little plastic cap available to push over it. Now, another reason for that, or purpose, is when you're putting your camera into this cage, or taking it out, because you've got to push the camera from the front to get it out, again, it'd be nice to be able to just push onto a cap instead of trying to work your fingers around and, and struggle not to touch the glass on your lens which is you know something that you you don't want to do really um, and also the cage itself um, I found that the the little cutout that's in it where that, that again is for where the memory card and USB slots are if I slot it back in to the cage The cutout in the cage itself isn't quite right for the USB um, socket. And again, it's difficult for me to show this, but you can imagine that. Can you see how close the, the, the socket is to the actual cage surface? So that if you plug the USB lead in when, the, when it's got the cage in it, it actually doesn't engage properly. And I'm just going to see if I can see it doesn't, it, it's actually hitting the cage, it, it doesn't go completely into the camera so you have to take the camera out of the cage to connect up by USB now yeah that can be fixed with a craft knife but uh, you know just get a little craft knife and, and just cut that cage a little bit more but at the end of the day with a, a piece of kit like this I shouldn't have to um, so that's it I mean that's basically the, the only annoyances that I've got with it um, like I said they are just niggles it's not it's not a major problem it's not a major issue what I will say with ISO is they're very, very good at doing firmware updates and they've been adding um, various features with, with firmware updates and, and the firmware updates, like I said, are, are, are quite quite regular. They do keep on top of it. We've even got, get ready for this because you might need to have a chair handy, we've actually got a company in the UK that provides technical support for ISO and you can phone them up and you will get an English person at the end of the phone that will talk you through any issues or problems that you're having with it. That alone is a massive winner for me. And basically that's about it with the with, with this camera I'm just really really happy with it if you want one of these I highly recommend uh, a retailer that I've become quite friendly with uh, because I've pestered him that much basically um, and it's it's the company's called hobby mounts and they're very very good at the, all the action cam stuff um, they do I've got another toy here I, I, they do, all the quadcopter things they, they do all that um, they're just a really good supplier that I've been very happy with. Level of customer service has been brilliant. So I'll put the URL up on the screen. That's Hobby Mounts. And I hope the check's in the post, by the way. <laughs> but um, And there we go. That's about it. And like I said, I'm just really, really happy with this camera. And, uh, you know, if, you, if you're looking at sort of that sort of thing, it's definitely one to have a look at. Look at the other reviews. I never found a bad review anywhere on this camera. Uh, when I looked around and did my research on it, I'm just over the moon with it. It's, so it's, it's a big thumbs up from me. And once again, thanks for watching.